<clears throat> All right. On this episode of Bare Knuckle Bowker, very excited to be talking with an individual who's got an enormous fight coming up at BYB 26 Mile Hill Brawl, and that goes down on May the 10th. It's the main event, no less, for the vacant BYB middleweight world title as Laurent T. Nelson steps into the mighty trigon against Tommy Turner and great having Tommy on the show. How's that going, man? You having a solid day so far? Uh, yeah, pretty good. I uh, got my morning training in and after we get done here, I'll go get some uh, about an hour and a half of boxing in and then uh, we'll do some cool down the rest of the day. No, for sure. And just wanted to congratulate you on the bare knuckle boxing hall of fame distinction early on. I mean, the John L Sullivan career comeback award. That sounds Pretty cool. Definitely a thing to be proud of. Like, what were your thoughts when you caught wind you were receiving that distinction? Uh, I'm I'm very happy and uh, glad to accept that. You know, um, it, it threw me off guard to get that award. Uh, I actually thought if I got any award, it would be the uh, the debut of the year, but uh, didn't get that one. Got this one, which I'd rather have this one anyway. So, um, very happy. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of interesting. Like what part of that was surprising to you in a sense, because I guess like my thought on the matter was I seen an Instagram post where you were talking about how at one point, just because of some, I guess, like crooked behind the scenes dealings in your glove boxing run, and you're like, ah, oh, maybe I'll just do something else. Like it seemed like you really had a flame ignited and this great new path in bare knuckle. I guess I interpreted it like that. But why were you kind of surprised by that almost? Um. Just getting the comeback award, I guess. Um, I mean, I've been fighting for over 20 years, pro for 13. Um, and then, you know, I knew bare knuckle was my thing the entire time I was boxing, just my style. Um, I didn't like chasing guys around a big ring uh, or fighting guys that like to box on the outside a whole lot. I like guys that have to ex want to exchange. Um, and, and being in the BYB Trigon, I knew oh, they've got no choice but to exchange or get caught in the corner. Um, so I always like that aspect. But then, uh, yeah, just getting the comeback award kind of threw me out. I didn't even know it was an award, actually. So, Yeah, but cool to be part of the hall in general. I mean, I get what you mean, though, for yeah, sure. I guess I'm absolutely. talking about the Trigon, though. I mean, I feel like a guy like Laurent T. Nelson is very much one to – you know, really take advantage of that and embrace that kind of spirit you're talking about fighting in the compact space and whatnot. I imagine this was an exciting proposition when the matchup was first presented to you and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think uh, we're one of the best matches that could have been made uh, stylistically. So uh, it's going to be fireworks and anyone watching probably shouldn't blink. Keep your eyes open because uh, anything can happen in this one. Well, I mean, there's a lot going on for sure, because, I mean, you've previously contended for titles like you fought one of the best fighters in the current landscape, I would say. And I think that's a distinction many share as well with that Police Gazette title and just with Nelson looking to cement himself as a two division champion, being that he's the BYB super middleweight champion. So a lot of fun machinations to this fight beyond the fact that it'll just be very exciting and how your styles play off each other. Yeah, absolutely. Um you know, and LT is kind of exciting to me after fighting uh, Barry Jones. Um, Barry Jones is just a different type of fighter. I took that fight a little too early. It was my second fight in bare knuckle. Um, where I think I'd fare a lot better, you know, maybe nowadays. But uh, I think just the build up and, and getting through the fights that I've gotten through have gotten me to where I need to be in order to beat LT and, and take this, the, the belt home. Yeah, and I mean, how much would that mean to you? I mean, cementing yourself in a league that you've obviously thrived within. I mean, your results speak for themselves, like highlight real wins. Absolutely. Like, how much would it mean to be cemented in this position with the BYB extreme organization and all? Uh, it, it made everything to me, you know, just to become a world champion. Um, like I said, I've been doing, I've been fighting for my whole adult life and and most of my childhood. So um, I'll be 37 this year. I've got a family. I've got kids. Uh, I, as much as I love doing this, I don't, I can't do it forever. So, um, the word retirement's always tossed up, especially coming from my wife. So, um, you know, if I, if I can go and get this title, then that'll kind of cement a legacy 
quote unquote, and uh, make me feel a little bit better about retiring maybe, you know, the end of this year or, or next year or something. So. Yeah, maybe get some defenses under your belt, that kind of thing. Is that like the ideal kind of unfurling of the story, I guess? Yeah, so I, I do have, I believe, four fights on contract. Um, so I would I would definitely, I mean, do those four fights. And then uh, we'd sit down and talk after that, see, see what we got going. Yeah, no, for sure. I get what you're laying down. And I thought it was kind of cool because... You did a sit down interview with Nelson a bit ago. And from what I was seeing on your Instagram, the production crew was kind of like, Are you guys good to do this interview that close to each other? And it seemed like you guys had a very casual rapport with each other, like a very tangible, mutual respect. So I think that's kind of cool as well. Like it's not any kind of contrived sort of thing. And you guys are obviously going to put on an incredible fight. So that was kind of fun to see. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not into all the extra stuff, man. I, I, why waste energy when I've got to use, I'm going to have to use all my energy on fight night. So we'll save it up for then. Um, I have no animosity towards LT. Uh, I don't have really animosity towards any fighters. Uh, I met LT when we both fought in London. Um, we kind of got to talk and we walked around London a little bit together. So, and then we fought on the card in, in December together. So um, we've, we've been around each other a little bit and there's a mutual respect, but at the same time, we both, We'll flip that switch, and uh, as soon as that bell rings, it's it's on. Absolutely, man. And I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't bring this up. Like, obviously, the focus is paramount on this fight, but, like, in the earlier part of our conversation, talking about how that Barry Jones fight would go differently if you were to have it as an upcoming fight, for instance. Like, I was seeing an interview Jim Freeman of BKB was doing with Bare Knuckle News, and he was talking about wanting to do more of these crossover fights that have happened between BYB and BKB. Is that something that you're interested in partaking in again? I mean, probably not any formal dialogue has been had so far being that you have this fight coming up, but is that something you'd want to be a part of again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've heard rumors, nothing for sure, but uh, I think something might happen this year. I'd love to be a part of that. And uh, I would really like to fight. I think, honestly, I think Barry's done. I think he's retiring. Um, so I don't, I think we'll let that fight go. Um, and I mean, he's got nothing else to prove. He's already in the hall of fame. He's, he's known as the, the greatest bare knuckle fighter on earth. I don't know that he's got anything else to prove and I'm hearing he's retiring. So, um, and I, I want, I went down and wait, so I'm more comfortable at 160. Um, so guys like Scott McHugh or, um, what was it Canelli or, or something like that would be, I think would be a great fight. Yeah, no super throw, entertaining. Throw the diamond belt in the mix, and that'd be even better. Yeah, well, I mean, you talk about, like, the idea of legacy earlier. Like, obviously, the BYB is carving out a great path in the present and, you know, going forward by proxy. But, I mean, that Police Gazette championship with that lengthy history dating back over a century, like, one of the longer legacies of any combat sports belt. So that would be a cool thing to have on the resume, in a sense, I would think, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um you know, before I'm done, I want to collect as many belts as I can to put on the wall and showcase, so. Yeah, and I mean, you've had such a great, you know, story throughout the broader course of your life, even beyond combat sports. Like, I thought Bare Knuckle Nation did a great feature on you recently, talking about how you overcame just really a lot of issues in your earlier years, just like with drugs and just like the prison stint and stuff like that, that was like briefer than it was initially, I guess, prognosticated to be i suppose and everything like that so i mean how important is that for you to just be you know an example in that kind of regard i think that's something that a lot of people can draw inspiration from if they're in a bad spot it seems like combat sports really pulled you out of a rough sort of rut and stuff like that as it were yeah uh you know boxing and, and mixed martial arts as soon as i got out really saved my life um growing up i i was a standout athlete. I played on seven all-star baseball teams and I pitched uh, five no-hitter games and was a standout football player, wrestler. Um, and I just, I think it goes to show that anybody can make one bad step and have to dig themselves out of a hole, right? So um, I took that step, I fell down in a hole and I had to climb out. And uh, it took me a couple years to do so. And then, uh, you know, I've been 
clean since I was 19 years old. I'm going to be 37. Um, and, you know, I've got a family, businesses, and my career is is uh, the best it's ever been. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned your kids and stuff like that. It looked like you gave them some haircuts recently. I think their first haircuts within the barber shop that you also have time at and work at and stuff like that. That must have been kind of cool to, you know, get to do that and stuff like that. And just moreover resonates like being a proud dad and stuff like that and kind of like showing off that side of what you get up to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my two boys here for years, but um, even before I was even licensed, I was practicing on them and they always went to school looking fresh, but um, I don't do a whole lot of girls hair, but I've done enough and my daughter needed she's three years old about to turn four she's never had a trim so it was kind of cool to see how exciting she, excited she... yeah no it's great to see man definitely oh yeah okay here we go but yeah, yeah just come good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it just comes across like just so, you know, nice, just a tight knit bond with your kids and stuff like that. And I, mean, I guess you were talking about earlier, like having like a few more fights and then maybe seeing what the path would be thereafter. Like, does that represent solely prioritizing work at the barber shop, or would you also be interested in keeping a foot in the fight game in a certain sense, like maybe as a trainer or something of that persuasion? Like, are you kind of thinking of that? Um, so I, I would, I would keep the barbershop. Um, I'd probably hire some barbers to, you know, take, take over spaces in my shop and I would be in there a lot less. Um, being that it's kind of another weird story. I, I went to prison at 18 years old. I got all my rights back. So everything's been expunged. I've actually had a couple offers to patrol for local PD or go to the fire department. So, um, that's kind of on the table for when I'm done um, something along those lines or uh, I, I and, and I'll definitely open a gym. I'm going to open a big gym and run an after school program for kids just so uh, they can kind of stay on the right path um, and not and not take the wrong step like I did when I was 17, 18 years old. And you articulated an interesting part of that earlier too. Like it just shows how it doesn't even have to be like a lengthy kind of like residual period of getting up to, you know, certain things like that. Like from what I could tell from your story, it was essentially just one night gone awry. And then it really set you back at least for like a brief period of time. So just kind of interesting in that sense. I feel like oftentimes when these stories are told, it's depicted as like multiple years of consistent habitual, you know, like wrongdoings or however you want to phrase that thought. Maybe that's not the way to phrase it, but lack of a better term. It just kind of shows how much even like one night can kind of alter certain things and everything like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the, the addiction thing kind of started, you know, at like 17 after at the end of my junior year. So um, my senior year was non-existent. Um, I still went and got my, my diploma uh, or my equivalency and all that stuff um, <clears throat> in hopes of playing college ball and all that. But uh, that kind of fell through and that kind of sent me down a spiral, uh, I guess. And I continued using until for about a little less than a year. And then it was one night, uh, drug and alcohol fueled. We just went out and did a bunch of dumb stuff. So it was literally one night, but you know, about a nine month period led up to that. And then um, lucky for me is I, I wasn't stuck in that life for years uh, in order, you know, long enough to build like a habit out of it. So I was able to break that pretty easily and, and get back to my athletic roots. Yeah. Now look at all you have going on. Like I saw that you had the, you know, son's class with the valentine's day boxes and i saw grandma trina was making a team samurai and byb extreme themed box that looked really good that was quite the you know mighty trigon that was set up there yeah she impressed me with that one <laughs> <laughs> no that's awesome and i guess like something oh sorry go ahead nope you're good i guess i was just saying like i guess kind of going back to the barber shop like a thing i kind of 
thought was interesting and it also seemed rooted in like an appreciation dynamic as well like it looked like you had a laurent t nelson poster up there and we're just moreover interested in getting like cool fighter posters but just was kind of fun to see his was up there and everything like that kind of underscores the mutual respect thing i was talking about before yeah um so everything on my walls is all has to do with fighting or football so um we we did a, a poster exchange after the fight in Denver. I kind of mentioned, hey, uh, we're eventually going to have to fight for one of these belts against each other. And uh, we kind of giggled and said, you know what, let's just do a poster exchange for now, and we'll talk about that later. So, um, yeah, like I said, there's no animosity. There's mutual respect, and uh, he's a legitimate professional fighter. So why not have him on the wall with, with uh, all the other fighters I've got on there? So. Yeah, and I mean, just an interesting dynamic, because like I was saying before, obviously known for some big highlight reel wins inside of the Trigon, and like your two wins are both sub one minute KOs within the bare knuckle realm. Like, are you a person that visualizes certain outcomes to your fights? Like, do you maybe see this just based on Nelson's resume as being the one that maybe gets into those deeper waters? Or I guess, how do you foresee things playing out with this fight and all? Um. So... I study everybody I fight. Um, the two guys I beat in under a minute, I called it. I said I would beat them in under a minute. Um, I've seen, you know, maybe a suspect chin or or open elbows so I could go to the body fairly easily. I know I'm a better boxer than these guys. I got way more experience boxing than them. Um, and I, I, I pack a, a very heavy punch. Um, so I know I just got to touch a guy. Um, and the thing with the LT is I've seen him get dropped, but he stands back up and he smiles and he says, let's go. And, uh, he doesn't get finished. So, um, I see him as, you know, the guy that is going to take me into some deeper waters and, um, I'm going to have to make sure I'm ready to swim with a shark. So, um, and I, and I think we're absolutely ready for that. And you talk about your heavy hands, which are demonstrable, just watching your fights and in those, you know, specific results that I mentioned. But I guess like to someone that hasn't gotten to compete in both sports as you have, like what differences are there, if at all, between a heavy punch you would land in gloved boxing versus, say, within bare knuckle? Um, so gloved, you've got the full on wrap, you got the knuckle pillow, um <clears throat> and, and then the glove, right? So you can kind of generate more power with that bigger surface area so i guess the brain's rattling more and you don't feel it as much on the hands um to where you know when i started bare knuckle i had guys that had fought before and they said don't throw as hard as you can you're going to break your hands um i i'm the guy that kind of threw that to the side and said i'm gonna, I'm going to throw as hard as i can when i when i can so uh luckily i haven't broken it broken any, anything yet but uh you know i just feel they're they're definitely a little more sore the knuckles will be swollen a lot more um bare knuckle but uh the thing with bare knuckles you just got to land one or two good ones and and either either they're out or they're cut so bad that the, the ref might stop the fight or something so no i mean interesting insights and kind of makes sense because even from like my layman kind of perspective watching some of your footage and gloved boxing and in bare knuckle, it doesn't seem like you follow that classic adage that a lot of people have where it's like, you can't be punching as hard as you do in gloved boxing. Like, it seems like you uncork those bad boys the same way each time. Yep. Yep. I, I, I figure I got to keep, I got to stick to my strengths, right? So um, there's no, no point in changing my style up. So I'm a boxer brawler and I like to throw power. So I'm just going to stick with it and hope hope that my hands don't break and uh and we can stop these guys yeah no for sure just such an exciting style and just a great guy to kind of mirror that energy in the ring here in this fight coming up and it seems like too based on some past preparations you have that maybe like the altitude won't be as much of a thing in here like i feel like you usually train in like higher altitude kind of spaces so i imagine that variable that might be a thing for some other fighters not accustomed to that like maybe that's not going to be a factor for you as much sure i mean actually sitting right here but i got this breathing machine 
dill right here that restricts my breathing. So I'm already living at 4,000 foot elevation um, in Idaho. Uh, we've got elevation gain right outside the door. Um, and then I can take a drive an hour and a half away and we're at 7,000 feet elevation. So um, I've, I'm training at elevation already. And then I'm using this little guy just to kind of restrict the breathing and get used to that a little more. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's a blessing being in Idaho as far as that goes. Um, as far as training partners and stuff, we're very limited here. But uh, but elevation and being in shape, this is the place to be. Yeah, no, it just also speaks to the idea of if you're looking at this fight as one that'll go the distance, just I can't imagine the pace will waver a great deal. It's kind of wild that you also have that device to compound the elevation that much more. That's interesting to see. Yeah, uh, I figure, especially with LT, I got to do as much as I can to to prep for this guy. He's, uh, I, I think I'm absolutely a more technically sound fighter than he is, but he's just got to be one of the toughest toughest men walking the face of the earth uh and you can see that from all his fights he's he's literally one of the toughest guys you'll ever see fight so um he he takes everyone to deep water so uh we're we're just making sure my lungs can deal with that and my my muscles can can, can keep firing through the rounds so well, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I guess just thinking of some of his fights, that Sam Liera fight stands out as like one of those like fight of the year kind of bouts. Like, I feel like this fight could almost fit within that as well, just based on like how your two styles mesh with each other and everything. Yeah, I, I think so as well. Um, I think even if it goes two, three rounds, it could it could be fight of the year. Um, I don't think it has to go the distance in order to be a fight of the year. Um, most people... They vote for a fight of the year out of a five or six round fight, right? So um, I think we're going to have enough action in two to three rounds that it's already going to be, it'll automatically be on the table for, for fight of the year. Yeah, absolutely. I can't imagine how it wouldn't fit within that, but it's been great getting to talk to you, Tommy. It's always fun getting your insights ahead of big fights and stuff like that, but just being mindful of the rest of your schedule and all, I'm curious if maybe you have a final thought you wanted to add as we're wrapping up here, man. Uh, no, I just, uh, thanks again for, you know, having me on here and, and talking with me. It's always, it's always good. And, uh, I'm just, uh, ready to hit weigh-ins and go eat honestly, and then get the fight over with. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be an awesome fight at BYB 26, an awesome fitting headliner to see who's going to capture that vacant BYB middleweight world title. And yeah, going to be awesome to see this Laurent T. Nelson fight. I'll certainly be checking it out, man. But until then, Tommy, you have a good rest of your day. And thank you so much for the time. Hey, you as well. Thank you.